<clears throat> okay, uh, before introducing today's uh, speaker, I'd like to uh, remind everybody attending this meeting that um, we are using uh, new, uh, new technology and um, so there may we should expect the unexpected if any problems arise Mark will be here and, and he will fix them um, so please bear with us if anything should happen uh, so I'd like to introduce today's speaker um, I'm delighted to welcome Dora Toda from uh, Trinity College Dublin and ESRI uh, Dora has a first degree from the University of Zagreb and a second degree in masters from uh, in economics from Tilburg. She was previously a research assistant in the European Central Bank and she has just submitted her PhD at uh, Trinity College Dublin in economics. Uh, she's currently a research analyst at the ESRI and her interests include labour economics, inequality and public economics. So today, Dora will be talking to us about um, desired hours per employed worker in European countries, and she will look at the effect of recessions on desired working hours. So Dora, over to you for the presentation. Thank you. Oh, sorry, just one more thing. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, please submit them and we will get to them at the end other than um, any points for clarification. Thank you. Thank you very much, Doran, and thank you for the invitation. I'm really excited to be here and discuss this paper with you. Uh, as Doran mentioned, um, this uh, this paper was a part of my uh, my thesis, and it's still to be uh, defended. So, if you have any comments, questions, um, they are more than welcome. Um, so, we're going to talk about desired hours uh, over the business cycle um, and uh, how this paper came to is essentially I saw this figure from Bell and Blanche Flower NBR uh, working paper from 2018, where, uh, where they show um, hours, a uh, million of hours per week. So this is on the Y axis over time. And they show that uh, people who said that want to work more hours kind of started to increase during the uh, Great Recession period. So just around the time the Great Recession uh, started around 2008, um, desired hours per worker started to increase and then they kind of tapered down uh, once the recession subsided. Um, those people wanting to work fewer hours, it, it kind of remained stable, but it started to increase as the recession subsided. So uh, I thought it was a, a very interesting pattern to observe. And I was wondering if we can see the same pattern uh, in, other, in other countries. But before we kind of delve into that, um, perhaps we can ask ourselves why are desired hours even important and why should we, why should we think, think about them? So if we think about actual hours, um, especially uh, labor supply literature that heavily relies on actual hours when estimating labor supply, um, actual hours are a result of both labor demand and labor supply. So it's a number of hours that employee and employer kind of agreed on um, that they are willing to pay for and work for. However, these actual hours are often restricted by a labor demand adjustments. So for example, in recessions, uh, labor demand goes down and then, um, and then actual hours do as well. Uh, for women or for secondary earners, this is often access to, to childcare, but also can be uh, labor market institutions. So one example is France, where uh, at the end of 90s, they introduced um, a cap on working hours and they decreased um, hours, weekly hours from 39 to 35. So after that, no one could really work 30, over 35 hours per week. So if we're interested to kind of see uh, true preferences on, on the labor market uh, or to estimate or see what the true labor supply looks like, desired hours uh, might be a better measure of, of labor supply. So this is kind of one big, uh, big idea uh, where desired hours could be useful. Another one is, especially in recessions, when uh, labor market is slack, which means that the, there's a large difference between desired and actual hours, um, unemployment rates are not as informative when it comes to estimating how much labor supply we have available in a country. Um, obviously, in boom periods, this difference between um, desired and actual hours will be much smaller or sometimes even close to, to zero. And then the labor market is tight. Unemployment rate will be the one fairly informative 
about the available um, labor supply, but not in recessions, recession periods. And this was kind of the Bill and Blanche flower uh, big idea. Uh, and they were saying that we can't really use uh, unemployment rates if we want to capture the total labor supply available in an economy, but underemployment is the one to be used. And then they use underemployment to, to estimate the Phillips curve for, for some European countries. But why does that even matter? Well, uh, one big thing is that um, in recovery periods, when uh, firms start to increase uh, labor demand, um, it might be very costly for them to hire new workers, especially um, if unemployment rates are very high, you can imagine that you, if you post an ad uh, for a vacancy, you would get hundreds or thousands applicants, and then it's very time consuming to go through all of them and interview all of them. Whereas if we know that there is a lot of labor supply available by those already in employment, and we can much less costly um, increase, uh, increase their hours worked. So that's kind of the, big, the second big idea. And then the third one is precautionary labor supply theory, uh, which says that in, a, in the presence of an income risk, which tends to go up uh, in recessions because there's a higher probability of a wage cut or there's a risk of losing one's job, individuals would perhaps like to work more hours to kind of uh, self-insure for future income losses. And this is what Yesen and co-authors did uh, for Germany, where they estimate that uh, for an increase in income risk, uh, individuals would like to work almost three hours more per week. But this cannot be estimated using actual hours because again, actual hours are kind of constrained um, by labor demand or access to child childcare. Um, and then desired hours are probably a better measure of a precautionary labor supply. And this, this will obviously have implications for savings behavior because um, if someone is willing to work more, then a natural question is, would they want to consume that uh, or would they want to save that extra money? However, out of all these um, possible, uh, possible theories why desired hours um, would be important, we, we still don't know how desired hours vary over the business cycle or across countries. And this is essentially what this paper um, is trying to, to answer. So uh, the first question I ask is, how do desired hours work to vary over the business cycle? I'll also I'll offer one possible explanation, or I'll discuss several, but I can only talk about one. And then what I would really like to do is quantify the causal effect of recessions on, uh, on desired hours. So as I said, um, I'll first um, show you some descriptive stylized fact for, facts for European countries, where I, I'll show you that uh, desired hours uh, per employee uh, are counter cyclical. And I'm covering um, the period from 1998 to 2017, which is quite of, um, it's, a, it's a broad period that covers in continental Europe, two recessions, and there are, for, there are approximately three boom periods um, uh, throughout that uh, sample period. Um, but what I'll also show you is that uh, during recessions, the underemployment gap is driven by desired hours rather than actual hours. So when I started working on this paper, my prior was that underemployment gap is driven by actual hours, that they go down in recessions. Uh, but I'll show you that that's actually not the case. Actual hours remain fairly stable in almost all countries uh, in Europe. Um, but the labor supply or desired hours worked are the ones um, increasing and driving the underemployment gap. Um, I'll identify the effect of recessions on desired hours using uh, variation in regional unemployment rates uh, within each country. And this is a fairly um, similar approach to Lazar and co-authors. This was Journal of Labor Economics in 2016, where, they co where the, the authors uh, wanted to estimate the effect of recessions on labor productivity in the US and they use the variation in, in local unemployment rates um, to estimate the effects on uh, labor productivity. Um, so as I said, I'm covering this average uh, effect of recessions or uh, unemployment rates on uh, desired hours uh, covers a very broad period from 98 to 2017, which covers more than one boom uh, and bust periods. Um, so it's likely that uh, this effect is, um, is biased down or, or is a lower bound. 
Um, so what I try to then do is um, narrow down the sample period uh, from 2007 to 2009 uh, using the French uh, data uh, to really narrow down it at the onset of the Great Recession and I find even larger um, effects of recession on, on the on desired hours. Um, as I said, I'll talk about uh, one possible um, mechanism that drives this uh, increase in desired hours. Um, not to repeat myself, I'll come back to I'll come back to that uh, a bit later. <clears throat> so, the data that I'm using uh, is a European Labor Force Survey. Um, I'm using the yearly version, so the the because LFS is published on both quarterly and yearly levels. I'm using the yearly levels because of some variables that I need that are not published uh, in the quarterly one. Um, it's a repeated, what's important to say is that it's a repeated cross section, uh, which means that I don't have a panel component, which means that I cannot track the same individual over time uh, and really see who is the person increasing desired hours, which um, obviously poses a, a restriction on uh, identification, but I'll discuss that in a bit. Um, I'm covering 12 European countries, um, but in this talk, I'll, I'll focus mostly on uh, France and Ireland. France, because, uh, because of some identification issues that, um, that I'll discuss in a bit, uh, and Ireland, because I think that's of interest to, to most of us. However, if there are questions on other countries, uh, I can show you results uh, for other countries as well. Uh, the sample uh, in this paper is employed individuals only those who answer the question about desired hours because there are some missings in the data. So I drop all of those who didn't answer the question uh, about desired hours. And this poses um, an, a valid concern uh, about selection uh, and, um, and whether that bias is the result. Um, because obviously we would, or it's natural that we would like to see um, how do desired hours of those unemployed look like. But if we think about it, if employed individuals in recessions increase their desired hours, and if we assume that unemployed are really unemployed because they want to work or they are searching for work, as is uh, LFS definition, uh, then if we would add unemployed individuals to the sample, that would only increase um, the estimation of recessions on, uh, on desired hours or the effect uh, of recessions. So uh, three questions that are asked in the survey. Um, first, uh, people, people reply to a question, do you want to work more hours, more than your current number of hours? And if they say yes, uh, then the question is, what is the way uh, you would like to work more hours? And what they can answer is uh, through an additional job, through the current job, but just more hours, or through a different job that kind of offers uh, more hours. And most people, pretty much say here through the current job, uh, but just with more hours. And that makes sense because there's a certain search uh, cost uh, to a new job, especially in recessions where um, competition can be quite high because there's a lot of people unemployed. And then what I'll be using is this third question um, or variable uh, that says, well, then what is the total number of hours um, that you would like to work? Ideally, uh, one would want individual wages here to really be able to estimate the labor supply elasticity. Um, however, wages are not available in the LFS. Um, as far as I know, they will start collecting uh, income information uh, from next year. Um, but what is av available is income decile information that starts in 2009. So I have a number from one to 10 uh, in which income decile uh, the individual is in. Um, so just uh, first graph or first few graphs on uh, those stylized facts that I mentioned at the beginning. Um, so what I'm plotting here on the left y axis are desired hours uh, worked per employee. Uh, and this is the solid line here in France. Um, the dashed line on the right hand side axis is uh, GDP per capita growth rate. Um, so we can see that desired hours in France start to increase around 2003. We, we don't, I don't have any information before 2003, which is a shame. But we can see that desired hours start to increase very, uh, 
well before uh, the, the Great Recession. And this is probably due to um, some labor market reforms that happened here from 1998 to 2002. As I said, uh, they introduced a 35 hour cap uh, on hours worked and there may be some individuals that would just like to work over that 35 hour cap. So uh, it is possible that this um, sharp increase in desired hours is actually driven by something else uh, than the Great Recession. But what's interesting then is that desired hours start to decrease as soon as uh, the recovery period in France begins. So around 2012, 2013, um, here at the end. On the other hand, here, um, the, the right-hand side graph is plotting desired hours against actual hours work to see really how the underemployment gap is looking like. And on the left axis here, I have, um, I have desired hours and here are actual hours. Um, the solid line is now actu average actual hours per employee. Uh, and we can see that um, actual hours are really dropping uh, sharply until 2003. And then again, as I said, this is probably due to um, the introduction of the 35 hour cap. But during the recessions period, so here until 2012, 13, actual hours remain fairly stable. And what's driving the unemployment gap, uh, underemployment gap is really uh, desired hours worked. There is a drop in actual hours here um, between 2012 and 2013. I have another paper on, um, on this. Uh, in 2012, France introduced um, overtime tax. Uh, and I show that um, this drop in actual hours is because of that. I might stop for a second, just if there are any questions. Okay, um, so in Ireland, um, things are not as dramatic, but we can see a very similar pattern. So again, uh, desired hours worked are a solid line here on the left Y axis and desired hours are, are dropping at the beginning of uh, 2000s. And um, they are fairly, there's a bit of volatility here uh, before the recession, but then in 2007, 2008, they start to increase and they're increasing um, up until 2014. And if, if we look at the magnitude of that, that's almost an hour and a half um, in only a few years. And then desired hours kind of start to uh, decrease once the recovery begins. And we can see that, that really the recovery began around 2014 here. On the other hand, um, actual hours, um, the solid line here, um, are decreasing sharply until uh, the beginning of, of the recession. Um, and this is fairly consistent with um, AER paper from Bacon co-authors uh, where they show that with an increase in standard of living, income per capita, actual hours are falling. People just work less because they're better off. Um, and then, uh, am I seeing a question coming in? Yes, um, so Kevin asked uh, if they are, uh, is it presumed at the current wage? Yes, so the question is formulated in a way um, for the wage that you have at the moment, would you like to work more hours? So uh, what is really capturing is, um, uh, is the income effect. And I'll talk, uh, talk more about that in a bit. Uh, and I saw another question. There's a question from Chris Jepson. Um, apologies if you said this already, but are these means conditional on working? Exactly. So uh, average desired hours per employed uh, because um, unemployed individuals don't answer that question. So it's not collected for unemployed individuals. Okay. Um, so what we can see then in during the recession period, yes, the actual hours dropped before the recession, but in the recession, actual hours remained fairly stable. Um, so if you look at the gap between desired and actual hours, uh, the gap is driven, the underemployment gap is driven by desired hours. So the labor supply side rather than the demand side. Um, this, is, this is something I already said. Um, so if desired hours are countercyclical, as I showed with very simple uh, descriptives, uh, why would that be? So I'll just briefly go through that um, because I, I won't be able to explain 
uh, all of it, um, but I will be able to say something about possible uh, effects um, of, uh, of recessions on desired hours. Um, so first possible explanation is the wealth effect, especially in the Great Recession, we know that housing and financial assets were particularly hit uh, in European countries, and it is possible um, that if individuals' asset loss, assets lost value, uh, that they would just like to work more hours to, to compensate for that wealth loss. Unfortunately, I don't have any wealth information uh, in LFS, uh, but I think this is a very interesting question. and, and uh, I will try to find a way to work on that, but if anyone has ideas, uh, they're, they're more than welcome. Um, on a similar note, uh, precautionary motives, I, I only already mentioned precautionary labor supply that in high income risk situations, people might want to work more uh, to compensate for the expected future losses. Um, as I said, Yesen and co-authors find this for Germany, but it could be the precautionary savings mechanism as well. Uh, if, if precautionary savings um, is a valid th uh, theoretical concept and we can find it in, in empirics, then maybe people would like to save more. So maybe people want to work more to be able to save um, that extra money. Again, I won't be able to say uh, much about uh, that either because I don't have any information on savings. What I will be able to say something about is the income effect. Um, so it is possible that uh, individuals' labor income decreases during recessions, and then they would like to uh, increase uh, their hours uh, worked for the given wage rate. This is, this is what Kevin asked uh, already. Um, what Borfczyk and Lal uh, found, this, is, this was AJ macro paper last year, is that in the US and UK, um, labor demand wasn't adjusted on the extensive margin, but on the intensive margin, which means that a lot of full-time employees um, now got part-time uh, contracts. So part-time work just became more prevalent in the Great Recession. And if that's the case, that means that um, labor income is halved um, and those people might want to just increase, um, go back to their full-time uh, contracts. Uh, very similar stories with temporary workers. Um, now, temporary workers, uh, temporary work is not as prevalent here in Ireland, but for example, in Portugal, where it is prevalent, uh, I really find that temporary workers want to work more hours. And with temporary workers, the, the fact is that they know when their contract is going to end, but they don't know what's going to happen after that. Will they get the contract renewed or will they be able to find a new, new contract? Sorry, Dora, would that be similar to seasonal work? Uh, yeah, yeah, that could be exactly. Thanks. Um, but and, and then just lastly, uh, income could also be targeted on the household level. So if out of two partners in a household, one lost their job, maybe uh, the one still in employment wants to uh, increase the the household budget um, to cover all the fixed costs that they might have. So whether it's rent or mortgage or food. Um, etc. Um, I can show you descriptives on this. Uh, however, I don't find any striking patterns there um, for, for uh, desired hours. Um, just briefly on uh, identific identification strategy, um, I'll estimate the effect of recessions on desired hours um, using variation in regional unemployment rates. And uh, to be able to do that, I need regional unemployment rates to vary within a country. And it's fairly easy to imagine that uh, an unemployment rate in France is, in, in Paris is um, different than some Mediterranean region, for example. But then I also uh, need those unemployment rates over time to vary at different rates uh, between regions. And this is what I find in the, in the data. So these regional unemployment rates come from Eurostat as well. It's, uh, it's LFS. Um, the main identifying assumption is that regional unemployment rate is exogenous to individual desired hours. And just a quick note on that. Um, if we think about reverse causality, for example, I'll show you that unemployment rates do affect uh, desired hours, but it's um, fairly difficult to see that my desired hours would affect um, unemployment rates. Um, measurement error is present to an extent. Um, this, is a sur this is survey data. So um, as always with survey data, there's gonna be a level of measurement error, but I try to minimize it by, um, by cleaning up the sample um, out of, from all of those who didn't answer the question on desired hours 
and really all the individual characteristics, I clean out um, all of the missings or as much as possible. And then lastly is uh, omitted variable bias. Uh, we can obviously think of a situation that more able people or more conscientious people are the ones who remain um, employed in recessions. Um, and in this first specification, um, without the panel component, I can't really control for that. Um, but to be able to, to control for, for these um, time invariant unobservable heterogeneity, um, I use data from France that um, has a panel component and I, I see even bigger effects there. Are there any questions here maybe? No. Okay. okay, so um, the empirical specification looks like this. I'll, um, it's a bit text heavy. Uh, I'm really sorry for that. So I'll just uh, run through each variable and I'll try to explain it. Uh, dependent variable is uh, desired hours for each individual I in region R in time period T, uh, so each year. Uh, you are a, our regional unemployment rate, so for each region uh, in period T, so this beta zero will be really the marginal effect of interest. Um, X is a, it's, it's a set of uh, individual characteristics. I include as much as possible what was available, so age, education, um, sector, occupation, uh, part-time and temporary contracts, um, and so on and so on. Um, Region fixed effects uh, should uh, pick up any uh, unobservable, unobservable differences between regions, time fixed effects uh, over time. I interact regions fixed effects with uh, individual uh, characteristics. So if there are any differences between uh, regions, so for some reason, if there's more part-time workers in one region uh, or maybe lower participation of women in a region or something like that, that should be picked up. Uh, by this interaction. And then I interact the region and time fixed effects. Um, so for example, if there, if there is a, an institutional change on the country level, like it was, for example, in France in, in 2002, but might affect regions different, differently because of the underlying labor market structure, this should be picked up by, uh, by this uh, interaction. And uh, standard errors are uh, bootstrapped. <clears throat> Um, I already said that. So what I'll show you um, now is our uh, our parameter of interest, so marginal effect of interest, the the, the effect of a un regional unemployment rate on hours worked, um, beta zero, and this is how it looks like for um, for all uh, countries in the sample. But I'll focus on France and Ireland. So in France. This effect is negative and it's statistically significant. Um, but in Ireland, it's positive and it's statistically significant at 10% level. Um, so this is around 0 0.1 uh, of an hour on average for the entire uh, sample period, which means that it's around six minutes uh, in the reference week. If we assume that the reference week is the same throughout the, um, the year, but it doesn't have to be, obviously, on a yearly level, this would be around five hours. Um, now, this, this sounds fairly low, um, but it's one of the biggest uh, effects that I find in this very uh, general specification. You can see that other countries like Czech Republic, um, like Poland, they have um, slightly smaller effects. Uh, Finland, this is also statistically significant at 10%, but UK is not. And if we count these countries where I find a positive and statistically significant effect, it's around half, it's around six countries, which doesn't sound a lot, but it's the first empirical, empirical specification. I also play around with that in the paper. For the sake of time, I'm just gonna skip it now uh, and we can discuss it later. Um, but I, I also introduce a recession dummy that in then three or four of these countries that are negative or statistically insignificant that then picks up the positive effect um, without changing the sign of, um, of the effect of, re of unemployment rates, right? So I, I'm, I checked for multicollinearity as well. I'll stop for a second. Um, just so people can absorb the graph. Okay. Um, <clears throat> as I said, um, this, this effect um, 
is the average effect for the entire sample period, so from 1998 to 2017. So it's likely to be um, a, a lower bound of the true effect. And also we don't take into account unemployed individuals. Um, so it, it, it's really likely that it's the lower bound of the true effect um, of recessions on desired hours. Um, and also, as I mentioned, uh, I'm, I'm not able to uh, control for uh, ability or any other uh, time invariant um, unobservable heterogeneity. So to, to do that, um, I take French LFS uh, that uh, contains a, ro a rolling panel um, and I can track one individual over six quarters um, that is employed and that answered at least uh, to uh, at least, uh, answer the question on desired hours in at least two quarters. Um, and I co construct four panels like that. So I'm interested to see what happened before um, <laughs> over controlling. Maybe, make it, maybe I can address uh, Kevin's question uh, towards the end, but I agree. Um, so um, I have four of, these, um, four of these panels. So just before the recession, at the onset of the Great Recession. Um, there was a small recovery around 2010, 2011 in France, and then there's a recovery period, um, so 2015, 2016. And I run these four separate regressions. Um, I, I chose the random effects model because it is more efficient. It's, it's uh, Hausman test confirmed it, but I do estimate OLS and fixed effects in the paper. If anyone's interested, it's very, um, clearly showing um, how desired hours variation is largely determined by uh, time invariant uh, characteristics like gender or, or age. Um, so the specification is exactly the same as it was. Again, this will be our marginal effect of interest, but the only thing that is new is are these individual fixed effects that are then controlling for um, ability or conscientiousness. And this is the result. I'm plotting um, beta zero um, in the period just before the recession. There is a small positive effect, but it's statistically insignificant. There is a positive effect of unemployment rate on um, desired hours at the onset of the Great Recession. And this is on average uh, six hours per quarter, which is much bigger than what we had before. And if you remember in France, that first empirical specification saw, sh showed or the result showed that the effect is negative. Um, and then uh, at the, in this period of small recovery, uh, the effect is uh, essentially zero and negative and statistically insignificant after so uh, from 2015 to 2016. So by controlling uh, for individual fixed effects and really narrowing down the sample size to the onset of the Great Recession, I show much larger effects uh, of, a recession, of the Great Recession on uh, desired hours worked. Uh, now, <clears throat> as I said, I am able to say something about the income effect, uh, not much more about those other plausible and possible uh, explanations. Um, but um, I'm able to look at uh, individuals from the bottom of the income distribution or across uh, the entire income distribution and also part-time and temporary workers. And those are usually the most vulnerable groups on the labor market. And in Ireland, this is specifically um, the case with, with part-time workers. Um, so I am I'm able to estimate the effect of regional unemployment rates uh, on desired hours per income decile. And I have that information from 2009 onwards, but also I'm able to look at part-time and temporary workers. Um, I'm gonna skip the descriptives um, just for the sake of time. And we, we can come back to that uh, if necessary, um, but the income effect should look like this. So the, uh, the specification is exactly the same. I add um, the interaction between unemployment rate and uh, income deciles. So this will be our marginal effect of interest, but I also include um, deciles uh, by themselves and I interact them with uh, regional, uh, regional fixed effects. Um, but the, these gammas will really tell us how much does one percentage point increase in regional unemployment rate 
change desired hours for each decile. The, the one decile that I omit is the median one, so everything should be kind of uh, interpreted compared to the median one. In France, the, it, the graph looks like this. So when I plot these gammas, uh, you, can, you can really see that the median, um, median decile is not here, but we can see that the bottom of the income distribution is increasing uh, desired hours the most. Um, the effect is almost um, zero uh, in the middle of the income distribution and it's negative at the top of the income distribution. Um, this is pretty much what we expected, but what's also striking is that this effect is larger than it was on average. So that first average specification I showed you, the biggest coefficient I found in Ireland, for example, was 0 0.1, which was like six minutes um, in the reference week, but here it's double that uh, at the bottom of the income distribution. Um, in Ireland, things are even more dramatic. Hmm. <clears throat> so when we look at the bottom of the income distribution here in Ireland, uh, the coefficient is 0 0.6 or 0 0.7 of an hour, which is around 40, uh, 45 minutes in the reference week, um, which is much, much bigger than the average effect. Um, and this is somewhat to be expected. Um, however, what's interesting in Ireland as well is this top of the income distribution where the richest individuals increase desired hours by 0 0.32 of an hour in the recession, uh, or on average, um, which is something like 25, 30 minutes, 25 minutes um, in the reference week. Um, if I think back to uh, Ireland in the Great Recession, uh, one possible thing is that the financial sector, which was hit the, hit ha the hardest, uh, those richest people might want to work more uh, to compensate for the income loss, labor income loss, or maybe it's really the wealth effect, um, which I don't uh, observe here. This is, this is what I already mentioned. And then... Um, for part-time and full-time workers, I think this is a very interesting descriptive to just look at because um, full th these are average desired hours per full-time and part-time workers. So in France, full-time workers are the ones essentially driving that, that hump shape that I showed you at the beginning. Uh, it remains stable, but then it really falls once the recovery begins. Uh, Part-time workers, on the other hand, really don't increase the desired hours. They, they increase desired hours here um, after 2012, but not during the, not, not during the recession. Um, in Ireland, on the, on the other hand, it's really, even from just the script, it's, it's, it's really visible that part-time workers were um, hit during the Great Recession, and they increased desired hours um, the most. Uh, so this is the right axis here. So from 18, uh, 18 hours on average in 2007, so before uh, the recession, to 26 hours um, at the peak um, of the recession, so 2013. And this is striking. This is eight hours on average um, uh, in, in just those couple of years. Not so much for full-time workers, right? Um, and this is what um, the uh, empirical analysis uh, shows as well. So uh, the empirical specification is again the same as it was before. Um, I just include the interaction be between part-time workers and unemployment rates and temporary workers and unemployment rate. Uh, as I said, France and Ireland are not really the ones uh, with prevalent temporary work, um, but um, this specification shows a very positive and significant effects in Portugal uh, because Portugal has a large prevalence of temporary workers. However, part-time workers um, are really the ones increasing desired hours. Um, so for one percentage point increase um, in unemployment rate uh, in France, part-time workers increase desired hours um, by roughly 15 minutes in the reference week, uh, reference week uh, but in Ireland, that's uh, 0 0.4 of an hour. So that's um, that's almost 30, 25, 30 minutes um, in the reference week. So it's it's much larger um, than, than the average effect, again, that I, that I showed at the beginning. Um, so just to conclude briefly, um, so I showed you uh, some descriptives that um, desired hours are counter-cyclical counter in, in most European countries. Um, but what's interesting is what's driving uh, that increase in desired hours. 
uh, in Ireland, as many studies in Ireland are showing that part-time workers are the most vulnerable group and youth um, in, uh, in recessions, uh, they are really driving at the increase in labor supply. Um, and that makes sense because they probably lost the most uh, labor income. Um, yes, top of the income distribution in Ireland also plays a role and that would be interesting to see. Um, I, I would really like to, to see how wealth played um, on the individual level and how does that uh, in increase desired hours. Um, but the implications uh, are, are the the implications of this results are probably uh, the most important in recovery periods. And I'm, I'm hoping that in the next months or a year, there will be, there will be another recovery period in all European countries. Um, and then it can be very informative to know how much of the labor supply we really have um, in an economy so that when the labor demand start, starts to pick up, um, we know what's the least costly way of actually recover uh, and start uh, employing the available labor supply. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dora. Um, okay, perhaps we can uh, go back to Kevin's question about over controlling and um, admitting some of the interactions. Um, so I have, um, and uh, in all fairness, the, uh, the results don't change much. Um, however, I found that it's easier to sell a down bias or over controlling uh, than an up bias. Um, so that's, that's one of the reasons uh, why I do that. Uh, so I'm just sorry. I'm just distracted by by another question uh, coming in. But the results don't don't change much. Okay. Um, we have a qu another question here from Chris Jepson. Uh, could you also look at multiple job holders? Um, very likely. Uh, I know that there LFS does have a question on. Um, do you have a second job? Um, but I don't think they collect desired hours. So desired hours are kind of in total, but I can have a look, well, how many people are having an additional job. Now, one concern with those variables is then how are they collected in a cross-country setup? Because um, there are some inconsistencies um, in how countries collect uh, these variables that are not like of main interest. Uh, so I find a lot of missings in, in these secondary job uh, holders. But I'll definitely have a look. Um, thank you, Chris, for, for that. OK, um, we had some comments in that came in then from Kevin. Um, he said, one, you're looking at unemployed recessions, unemployment recessions, but you could also look at GDP recessions. They are not always as correlated as people think, for example, Germany and Ireland in the Great Recession. And two, uh, he would be interested in seeing uh, male-female differences are mothers versus non-mothers. Yes. Um, so uh, GDP recessions, um, I, I briefly mentioned that um, I have another specification in the paper uh, where I include a dummy. Uh, so the, the variable is equal to one if it's a GDP recession and zero otherwise. And for those countries where I showed uh, before, uh, just a second. Uh, so um, for UK, for example, when I include that um, recession dummy, that's the that's the variable that picks up a positive uh, and statistically significant effect. This one doesn't change much. Um, the same is for Austria and Portugal. In Greece, it's a weird situation because this sign flips, and I check that multicollinearity is really through the roof. So I'm really afraid to even interpret that number. Uh, but it, it really then this you're right that this um, GDP recession picks up uh, the effect even when the unemployment rate is not. Although my prior would be that um, people are more, more sensitive or more um, observant, I guess, of uh, local unemployment rates. But maybe that's not the case because of the news cycle. Or so. So yes, I, I, I tried to do that. And there was another male female. Yes. I'll show you that. I'm really sorry if this is too fast in front of. So yes. Uh, so 
these are uh, average desired hours in France and Ireland by gender. Um, and in France, um, we can really see a, a sharp increase in female uh, desired hours. They are on the right axis here. Um, and they remain fairly stable, um, but men tend to decrease their desired hours. Um, and this is what I see in UK as well. Like you can really see like a cross shape like that, that women are increasing desired hours throughout the entire period. It has nothing to do with the recession, just um, emancipation, I guess, and participation on the labor market, but men are decreasing um, desired hours. Um, in, in Ireland, um, it's a bit different because I, I see really that um, average desired hours um, by women are increasing, increasing at the onset of uh, the Great Recession. Um, now, one intuitive, I can't really check for that, but one intuitive interpretation is the construction sector that got hit and then perhaps a lot of men lost their jobs um, and their partners, women, started to increase their labor supply, which is which is possible. Um, but because I don't have um, household level information that I can really say, oh, this person lost their job and then their partner increased their, their desired hours, I can't really answer that question. Okay, thank you. Um, can you just say a little bit, um, maybe it's more of a clarification point about um, immigrant populations in your data sets? Uh, unfortunately, I can't say anything about that. Um, so as far as I know, EU LFS, so maybe a national LFS would contain some information about uh, migrants, but EU LFS doesn't publish it. Uh, and there is a lot of, there are a lot of variables like that, that I would like to look at, like number of children, for example, because um, there's a lot of inconsistencies and missing variables in the number of children. Um, but if I would dig deeper, for example, in an Irish data set, I would probably be able to find it there. But in this cross-country setup, it, it's, it's not really possible to do. Sure, it's just, it's kind of interesting that sometimes they'll employ very different strategies to the kind of native population, for want of a different yes. phrase. Okay, uh, are there any further questions from anybody out there? Okay, um, I'd like to thank you all for uh, attending this uh, seminar today. More importantly, uh, I'd like to thank uh, Dora for her presentation today and uh, wish her all the best with the, her PhD and uh, career at the SRI. And um, please do stay in touch with us at the Geary Institute. So thank you very much, Dora. Thank you, Dora, and thank you very, very much for your comments. They were very okay. useful. Hold on, we have one further question. Is that actually ah, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Uh, thank what you, Jonathan. Questions and answers. Uh, Jonathan, great work. Thank you very much. So that's, <laughs> that's the best one. Thank that's you. That's the best one. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. Bye.